Good evening and welcome to My Future. I'm Ruve Nicol. In tonight's episode, we get to find out what STEM is all about. On the radio, in the newspapers and on television, we've just been hearing about STEMitizing our future. So we have the Deputy Minister of Higher and Tertiary Education, Science and Technology Development, Dr. Godfrey Gandawa, to talk us through what STEM is all about. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for joining us, uh, Deputy Minister. Now, we have been hearing about STEM. We've been seeing it all over on different multimedia platforms. Please tell us, what is STEM? STEM is, is an acronym for Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics, which uh, drives economy in terms of education. If you train people in STEM, mm -hmm. it means you are able to drive your economy or industrialize your economy. Right. Yes. So I believe you're appealing to candidates that just finished their O-levels, the 2015 year of O-level graduates, appealing to say they should participate in the STEM revolution and take up subjects that help them to participate, as you said, in our economy in the areas of science, technology, engineering and mathematics. What does that mean? What subjects do, do I have to take on if I want to be part of this? It is critical to note that we are encouraging the 2015 O-level students mm -hmm. that set for their examinations in 2015 because we have realized the fact that we have a smaller number of these science uh, students that are getting into our universities. Mm -hmm. So we found it necessary that we go down and take them from, encourage them from O-level to take the science subject which is biology, mathematics, physics and chemistry to A-level so that they are able to Stematize. How future. small is the number? I mean, is there that much of a disparity that the government has taken on an entire campaign to encourage students to take on science subjects? We have uh, 3,000 plus or minus 3,300 students mm -hmm. that take sciences at, at, all, at all level or uh, then getting into A level. So 3,000 in 3, the whole country. 300 in the whole country that takes wow. sci science okay. sciences. Sure. And some people would argue to say we have about 9,000 9, take about mathematics, but uh, there is a combination of three subjects that you take. Mm -hmm. So if you are taking physics, you have to take it with the other two subjects. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you have 3,300 students that take the sciences. Right. And we have 15 universities in the country. Right. All universities teaching sciences. Mm -hmm. So you will see the disparity of the numbers where you have 3,000 and you want the economy to be driven by scientists. So let's come to that point. Um, you did touch on it when I first asked you what is STEM. Is the assumption that all these students that take on STEM subjects are going to revolutionize and industrialize Zimbabwe? Is that the end goal? I mean, where are we going to be 10 years from now? Fundamentally, you realize a STEM or science, technology and engineering will always control the economy, not only in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. but world over, because they are almost five spheres of life or every aspect of our life mm -hmm. has been pervaded by technology science and mathematics. I thought we were an agri-based economy. As Zimbabweans, we're always told that our economy is driven by agriculture. Even our president has referred to that, um, saying that we should focus on agriculture and do better there. So as a third world country, is science and technology development really what's going to change our economy? Agriculture mm. requires science, and technology, technology and engineering. Right. There is climate change. Mm -hmm. It falls under science. Mm -hmm. If you talk of irrigation engineering, we're talking about science. Right. For us to be able to produce enough food, definitely we need science, we need engineers, mm -hmm. we need technicians mm -hmm. who are able to drive the economy. Right. So now you reference that you're appealing to the 2015 O-level class, and that is higher, um, so that is primary and secondary education. Why is it then that the Ministry of Higher and tertiary education is handling something that we would assume should actually be rolled out by the Ministry of Primary and Secondary Education? We are one government. Mm -hmm. The Ministry of Primary and Secondary Education is our system ministry. Mm -hmm. And obviously they are the ones that uh, you know, groom these students from primary to secondary. Right. And eventually they give us to us at the tertiary and higher education. Mm -hmm. So if we don't work together or collaborate to make sure that we produce the students at an, a, a lower level, that will get into our universities. We will be doing a disservice to the nation. So it is prudent that as 
ministries, the two ministries, should work together, collaborate, and make sure we produce a whole citizen for the country. All right. I think um, I, 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 I see your point, but my question would then be, why is it not Honorable Nokora sitting where you are explaining this? The, the essence is we have found the gap mm -hmm. at the higher level. Mm -hmm. And we will not be able to produce the students ourselves for our universities and polytechnics. Right. So therefore, we are only assisting in the payment of tuition and boarding fees for their students. Mm -hmm. But it still remains their mandate. They are the ones that will eventually administer mm -hmm. the fund to make sure that, you know, um, there is smooth flow of right. the program. Right. And let's get into the funding aspect. Um, you just touched on now, which is the first mention of it. A lot of people are carelessly saying that the government is offering free education. Um, I think you need to maybe clarify that for us. What does it mean to take on STEM subjects and be STEMitized and become a student at A level studying physics, biology, chemistry, or mathematics? That's why the Ministry of Higher Education, Science and Technology is coming in, mm. because we have a fund for human skills development under the Zimbabwe Mining Power Development Fund, mm -hmm. popular known, known as ZIMDEV. So we, the minister as the trustee of the fund, will always direct upon the advice of industry, uh, represented by uh, NAMACO, the National Mining Power Development Council. Mm -hmm. They will tell us which areas or gaps that we have in industry right. and, and the economy right. and advise us to train in that particular areas or to close that gap. So it has come to us that the science areas, the technicians, the scientists, even the teachers, the science teachers, we have not enough in the country. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are closing the gap and we have decided to channel a certain portion of the fund towards the, the A-level students that we are encouraging to enroll in the STEM program. So you've answered two questions for me, that there will be government assistance when it comes to school and boarding fees, and that the money is coming from ZIMDEF. Because, of course, people's first question would be, Mariacho iriku vakupi. You know, we know the economy we live in. We know what is happening with our government. We know what's happening in Zimbabwe. There's still civil servants begging for, um, you know, 13th checks. And uh, that those, you know, demands have not yet been met. So the question is, where does government get all this money when there's so many other areas that are unattended to? Can we trust that this is really going to happen? It is going to happen because the fund has always been there. Mm -hmm. But the fund has been used into polytechnics, teachers' colleges and universities to support their operations and running costs. Mm -hmm. So all what we have decided is to take a chunk of that money that is always coming from industry mm -hmm. towards human skills development and channel it towards the, the school fees and boarding fees for this particular group. And this group being only students at public schools, again, just to clarify that it is not for all schools, it is for public schools. It is for public schools, which is government schools as well as uh, mission schools. Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, taking cognizance of the fact that in most cases, these the people that go in these schools are the most affected and sometimes they are not able to pay uh, for their tuition and boarding fees. Mm -hmm. That's why we are not including the private, so-called private schools. Well, Zimbabwe, do you know you're assuming that every parent that has a child at a private school is managing their school fees and that they wouldn't also need some government assistance? If you choose to send your child to a private school, considering that we all live in Zimbabwe and we know the, the fees that they charge, mm -hmm. it means you might not have the fees today, but you have an idea of where you will get the, the funds. But... Uh, the highly trained students that we know always take their children to public schools. Mm. There is no reason why, if we have the funds, there is no reason why we should not support all schools. But in this particular instance, we found it fit to make sure we support these public schools for a start. There is uh, Dr. Godfrey Gandawa, the Deputy Minister of Higher and Tertiary Education, Science and Te Technology Development, talking us through what STEM is. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know if every parent that has a child at a private school can afford their fees. It's a very serious assumption to make, but we'll discuss more after the break. We'll be right back.
the need to equip learners with knowledge, skills, and values that guarantee economic growth and increased opportunities for employment creation. Our education systems in Africa and the third world must produce well-rounded citizens who are relevant nationally and competitive globally. Welcome back to My Future, I'm Ruveniko. Tonight's episode is focusing on STEM, a new government initiative, not necessarily brand new, and we'll understand why in a moment, but new to most of us. Um, basically, STEM is a rollout by the Ministry of High and Tertiary Education, Science and Te Technology Development to encourage O-level students of the class of 2015 to take on STEM subjects. STEM subjects are physics, chemistry, biology, and mathematics. Now the government says that through the ZIMDEF fund, they'll be able to assist in the financing of the school fees and the boarding fees for these particular students as they embark on their A-levels. Now, uh, Dr. Godfrey Gandava is explaining to us some more, and we'll come back to you now and ask that STEM is not something that started this week. We've been hearing about it this week, but please explain to us the background and where it really came from. STEM mm. was launched by His Excellency the President, Comrade Robert Gabriel Mugabe, after realizing that as a country, we are lagging behind in terms of industrialization. You can also realize that uh, when he was the, the chairman of the SADC, mm -hmm. SADC came with a roadmap of industrialization which is hinged on STEM. Right. So it was so prudent for the president to make sure that he leads by example mm -hmm. as a country to also advance uh, STEM because we are saying also the countries must be able to industrialize. Right. Which other countries are doing it? I mean, I believe there's other countries that we can look at and they've used this as a model to industrialize, to develop. The countries that are leading now in, you know, electronics and leading in technological development, you even talked about how agriculture um, hinges and depends a lot on the science and uh, development. India mm -hmm. uh, has developed much in terms of uh, science and technology, right. uh, in pharmaceuticals, mm. medicals. Right. You've always had people say, we're going to India for this operation and that, because they took it upon themselves right. and invested in appropriate technologies and training sure. in STEM. So we are looking at other models, seeing how it has worked, and the president having said this is something that we take on as an initiative, obviously prompted by him. And as the Ministry of Higher and Tertiary Education, Science and Technology Development, you're taking it on to make sure it happens. We are mandated mm. to make sure that we develop science and technology in the country. Right. So we are just taking heed to what the president has called for and we are implementing his policy. Sure. In the STEM revolution, my concern was where you mentioned that if you have a C grade or higher in your O-levels, you can then enter into the science subjects for your A-level. Now, what I know about a lot of schools, even the school I was at, you're not even allowed to enter into physics, chemistry, maths, or biology with a C at O level. What I could tell my subjects, you are up at A level. Simply because they feel that you're a weaker student in those areas and you might struggle or simply fail. So what are we going to do now to our education levels and you know, even the pass rate in Zimbabwe encouraging this kind of movement? I believe it is not true that if you obtain a C at O level, uh, you might not be able to obtain a B or an A at A level. What's the point in it, grading it, students? It, it depends with the environment at which you wrote the examination in. You know, sometimes there are different uh, environments and the environments change. And if we work, we believe we have teachers that have the capacity to improve the grades of the students. That's why we are saying even with a C, you should be able to take up STEM and you will improve your grade if you work hard. I believe that government is also looking to train about 5,000 teachers in these particular subjects by the end of the year. If I work hard, how can I be sure that my teachers are well equipped and my school is well equipped to be able to take me through these very difficult subjects? We are training the teachers, also the science teachers. Our universities are training mm -hmm. the science teachers. Having a qualified teacher and having at least the basic infrastructure mm -hmm. will make sure as we obtain uh, better grades. I am very optimistic that the environment that we already have is basic enough to make us get the grades that we want. You know, when we say a country must develop, 
we must be able to produce patterns mm -hmm. and copyrights that will lead into producing products, our own products. Mm -hmm. But if you don't develop these youngsters, you know, from the lower levels until they get to university, you will not be able to produce a patent at all. Right. We will always be buying from other countries. Right. We must get to a level where the youngsters are groomed up from A level to the university to be able to produce patents. Then we know we have a product that comes from Zimbabwe, a product that will allow us to make a startup in Zimbabwe, a product that will allow us to have our own company in Zimbabwe and there are benefits that come from that. I think I'll come back then to the question around um, primary and secondary ministry where if you're going to encourage students at the age of 16 to take on science subjects with this understanding in mind that looking ahead they're going to contribute to Zimbabwe's industrial industrialization and our you know economic transformation shouldn't you then be targeting them as early as ECD level to say there is a world of science and technology that exists and you can become a part of it and put an emphasis in that education even extracurricular activities that get children from 3,000 only students at A-level that take on these subjects to grow that number to numbers that make sense. If we're going to talk about the transformation of our economy we need much higher numbers than that surely. I must compliment what um, the Minister of Primary and Secondary Education have done. Mm. They have done a curriculum re review which is actually uh, told them after the review they now know it is important to start science and technology from ECD, ECD1 mm. up to a, a, a level right. and they have already started implementing that curriculum mm. and I'm very positive uh, we are only complimenting what they are doing and they are in the right direction in making sure the science is demystified at a Younger age. age. Right. All right. Well, we all have our strengths and our weaknesses. Um, from where I'm sitting, I'll definitely say that studying science and technology and physics and chemistry is not something that I would have even considered at A-level. But when you look at the future of our country and you look at where we need to get to, surely it's something worth considering. We'll be back. Welcome back to My Future. I'm Ruven Eko. Tonight we are in studio with Deputy Minister of Higher and Tertiary Education, Science and Technology Development, Dr. Godfrey Gandawa. And he's been talking us through what STEM is. Now we're going to conclude now, having obviously understood the background, the history of what STEM is, its intention for our education system and of course for the future of Zimbabwe. Now we're going to touch on some more areas that really will put it into context for us. And the question I'd ask is, if the government told you that they would pay for your A-level education if you studied physics, chemistry, biology or mathematics, would you take it on? So Dr. Gandawa, the question I want to ask you, what makes a student choose specific subjects at A-level? In most cases, uh, some students choose a specific subject because of the career they want to get into or the job that they want to get into. Right. But in other times, you know, sometimes the parents choose for them or mm -hmm. they just decide to do it for the sake of doing it. Mm -hmm. If they are choosing these subjects because of what they want to be, maybe you can educate us a little bit more on some of the career options having come out of the STEM syllabus. I will start with entertainment. Mm -hmm. People would think entertainment, you know, does not require you to have science. But uh, we have scientists that are working in entertainment. Entertainment mm -hmm. industry has become a very big business. There is analysts, there is programmers, you know, there are producers, visual uh, um, engineers, and so on. Sound engineers, Sound photographers, engineers cameramen. So yeah. In entertainment. Mm. It means that aspect has been uh, influenced by STEM. Mm -hmm. You get into production. There is automization, there's robotization, you know, there's design of new materials and so on, in production. Right. STEM is there. Mm -hmm. You talk of inhabitant, you have heard of smart cities. 
You now have, you need architectures, you know, designers and so on. How do we build modern cities? Science have pervaded in that, in, in, in that aspect. So are you insinuating that scientists are going to be more important than any other profession? Because the fact that government is emphasizing to say, you know what? Let us pay for these ones that are doing these four subjects that will focus on these key, by your definition, sectors, right? What are you saying about the rest of us? It is very critical to note that, you know, sometimes people get a misconception that mm. we are saying the other, no, yes, the other fields mm. are not important. Mm -hmm. They are as important as the STEM courses. Mm -hmm. I want to reiterate that. Mm -hmm. They are very important. All other fields are very important as much as STEM. But, but it stands to reason that whenever you discover a gap, you must close the gap. Mm -hmm. It is true, and I will stand by this, to say we have no shortage of human resources in humanities and social sciences, but we have a shortage in the STEM fields, mm -hmm. and we want to close that gap. Mm -hmm. When that gap is closed, there will come a time where you need to also pay for social, social scientists or humanities if there is need to increase the numbers in that area. All right, but I'm in this particular mm -hmm. instance, the gap is in the STEM courses. If we're pushing for the STEM revolution, what is going to happen to all these students, either when they finish A-level or when they graduate? Where are the jobs going to come from? Where is the stuff they're going to need to develop? What are they going to create? What are they going to use? What are they going to be a part of? The STEM graduates mm. will not only look for employment, They'll create they, employment. They will create employment. <laughs> See, that they is, will yes. surely create employment. Mm. If uh, I am an architecture, started my, my sciences, and I'm in architecture, while I might be working for one organization, I might even be doing consultancy and doing some work for myself, employ two more, three people. Uh, that will also uh, help me do what I'm okay, doing. Okay, so you're an architect building and designing for who? What are you building and designing? You go into the Western suburbs, go in every location, you would find there is need for an architect, there is need for an engineer. Is yes. 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 Uh, Let's say I do start my own company and I start my own organization. I want to employ and I want to contribute to this belief that Zimbabwe is going to create its own employment and transform its economy. Where do I start from? And I'm saying this because these young children that are going to be, a, you, know, a, you know, basically pulled into the STEM revolution and, and lead with it and run with it, it's all good and well. But I'm just asking about The problems that we have now, they are temporary. The industries will revive for as long as we have the correct human skills that we want. We will be able to create industries if we train these uh, STEM students. The mm -hmm. STEM students, if they produce patterns, obviously they will start up a company. Mm -hmm. And they might start massive companies mm -hmm. that will create employment. Definitely the 2.2 million jobs, you know, they cannot be created uh, in a day or overnight. Mm -hmm. But we have to start to make strides in the right direction for us to be able to produce the jobs. Now let's just understand how exactly I register for STEM. You should be able to register at the school of your choice mm. where you intend to do uh, your A levels. Right. Yeah, you public school public, public or mission school yes. of my choice yeah. where you I you register at that school mm -hmm. or you can go on the website uh, which is www.stemstudents.co.zw. Right. Or you can approach the Ministry of Higher and Tertiary Education, Science and Technology Development mm -hmm. for registration. All right. The ministries have moved around a little. Where are you now? We are at um, Kona Samora Marcel uh, and Fourth. New government complex. Avenue, new government complex. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we heard it all from Dr. Godfrey Gandawa, the Deputy Minister in the Ministry of Higher and Tertiary Education, Science and Technology Development. There's more information on STEM on www.stemstudents.co.zw. Find out more about that. Learn how you can stematize your future. Enjoy the music. I believe Jar Prazer is uh, the man who sang the jingle for this campaign, supporting it as one of the biggest artists in Zimbabwe. Stematize today. That's it from me. Thank you again, Dr. Gandawa. Thank you, Rebecca.
All right, that's it from me. I'm Ravenna Nicole. Good night for now. Be good. If you can't be good, be safe. <laughs> Uti uzitze mahara Dai zira kuti Hande machine hande Vasika na dai dai Chiri yo miri so chiri yo Ingasi tenderi Gasi yende beri